Welcome, boys and girls, to Storytime at Dowdell Library. My name is Miss Marianne, and I will be your host. Guess what type of book we're going to be reading today? Well, I guess I got to give you a few hints, right? What about candy and costumes? Hmm? Yeah, you got it. It's a Halloween story. The name of the book today is Pumpkin Cat by Ann Turner illustrated by Amy June Bates. All right, let's get started. The wind howled, thunder boomed, the cat skittered sideways into a ditch, but water pounded after her. Racing ahead, the cat found a hollow pipe to hide in, but the water followed her pushing, pushing, until she was swept away. The racing stream tugged her this way and that, and then it slowed and left the cat on a wet green lawn. The cat struggled upright, licked her fur feebly and staggered forward. Ahead was a building. Buildings met people and people met food and warmth. Wearily, the ginger cat dragged herself to the top step. There were no lights, no open doors, no voices floating out. Her whole body aching, the cat found a small door in a tall wooden box and pushed through it. She slept. Oh, look, it's a cat. Warm fingers lifted her out of the wooden box. Did someone return her with a book? Did they think she was due? Lisa chuckled, holding the cat close to her body. The cat hung limply, not moving. Rochelle, is she all right? The other librarian peered at the cat. Softly, she stroked the cat again and again until a purr rumbled under her thumb. She's all right, Lisa, just tired and hungry. I think. Let's get her inside. They bustled around, tipping things out of a large basket and lining it with a green sweater. Rochelle ran across the street to the market to buy some kibble. Tuna feast. Every cat loves tuna fe feast, she said, putting it in a dish near the basket. Come on, library cat. Please eat. She needs a name, Rochelle said something to do with Halloween since it's a few days away. How about Hollow's Eve? The cat rubbed against the librarian's legs. She wore soft black shoes. They smelled like sheep. No, said Lisa. We can't call her Eve. She's sort of orange, a ginger cat. How about pumpkin cat? Yes, I like that, Rochelle nodded. Let's call her pumpkin cat. The cat drank some water, nibbled some food, poured through some books, and explored the high ceiling rooms. It didn't feel like a home yet. She knew that homes were more than walls and a roof to keep out the rain, but she wasn't what, quite sure what she was missing. The next day, the door opened with a bang. Now, second graders, said Rochelle, coming to the children's room. Some sat on the floor, some on chairs, and one on a cushion that exploded. <coughs> Yowl, howled Pumpkin Cat and shot out into the room. A little girl with braids chirruped to her, Kitty, come to Charlotte. The cat paused, turned, and nosed the little girl's hand. Purr, said the Pumpkin Cat, purr. The girl smelled like dog bones and fresh air, and her overalls were soft and cozy. P 
pumpkin cat uh, curled up on Charlotte's lap and went to sleep. She remembered that this was part of having a warm home and lap and someone to pet her. But when the light faded in the sky, the girl with the braids went away and the library felt huge and echoing. Pumpkin Cat walked around and around the library looking for a friend. She knew the noisy mice in the cellar could never be her friends. So she curled up to sleep by the stuffed sock monkey in the children's room. Her beady eyes gleamed, but he said not one word. He never did, and the wooden sheep that lived in the barn in the corner, they never said a word either. One day, the librarian, who always wore soft black shoes, brought a pumpkin and put it on her desk. It glowed like a bright orange moon. Pumpkin Cat could hear the sound of children's voices outside, of feet running across the lawn. She peered out the open door. There was Charlotte, but everyone looked strange and different. A boy wore a shiny silver suit. Charlotte wore a black hat that could not hide her braids and a long black dress. Others wore wigs and frightening masks. The children circled around the big black pot in the middle of the lawn. They seemed to be fishing for something, but what? Pumpkin Cat saw a boy bob up with a red apple in his teeth. It was all so strange and new that she stayed hidden and watched. Off to the side, children stuck their fingers into a box filled with sawdust. They scrabbled and held coins up to the fading light. Look, a nickel, look, a penny. Pumpkin came out for a better look. She wanted to be with them, so she pattered down the steps. When she found Shower Charlotte, the ginger cat rubbed shyly against her leg. Here you are. I've been looking for you, the girl cried. Look, here's your fortune. Today you will find your heart's desire. But her voice was too loud and Pumpkin Cat was afraid. She skittered off and hid behind a ewe. It wasn't until everyone had gone away and she heard the librarians calling her that she crept out from under the branches. Slowly she went up the stone steps. She paused at the top, reluctant to go into the huge echoing rooms with no one to keep her company but the noisy mice in the cellar. What's this, Rochelle? Lisa said, taking off her carnival mask and crouching by the basket on the top step. Someone's left something here. It's not one of the prizes, is it? Rochelle knelt by the basket and pulled out a fuzzy pink blanket. Underneath was a tiny black kitten curled up and sleeping. To one side was a small card. My name is Halloween Cat and I need a home. I like to purr and tuna is my favorite food. I hear this library likes cats. Well, Lisa said, that takes nerve. Slowly, Pumpkin Cat edged up to the basket and sniffed. What a wonderful smell. Fur, warm breath, a hint of tuna, and the stuffy coziness that comes from sleeping under blankets. Gently, she grabbed the back of the kitten's neck and took her inside. The kitten swung back and forth purring. C Pumpkin Cat placed her in the basket where she herself always slept. Carefully, thoroughly, she licked her from nose to tail, paying special attention to her ears. When she was done, Pumpkin Cat chirruped and nudged the kitten towards the kibble dish. The kitten ate a few bites. Pumpkin Cat nudged her towards the water dish and then the litter pan. 
Well, Rochelle said, smiling, I guess someone was right. We are a library that needs cats. And you know, Lisa, Pumpkin Cat needs help with the mice in the cellar. When they locked up the library, Rochelle took one last look. The two cats were curled together in the basket, Gingerhead next to Blackhead. Pumpkin Cat purred and stayed awake long enough to feel the small, warm body against hers. Later, she would tell the kitten about the mice in the cellar and how foolish the sock monkey was and how silent the wooden sheep. But for now, she had finally found what was missing. The end. That was a fun story today. I hope you enjoyed it too. Stop by the library so you could check this book out and many more on Halloween. Also during the week of October 26th till October 30th, we'll be handing out candy. So stop by. See you soon for another story time. Bye-bye.